Hey, welcome to Domino Veterinary Hospital. I'm Charles Bradley, DVM. Hey, do you guys know what DVM means? Doctor of Veterinary Medicine. There's another form called VMD, which is Veterinary Medical Doctor, and that is for the fortunate graduates of University of Pennsylvania. And there's even DMV. Do you know what that means? DMV, Doctor de Médecin Veterinaire. DMV, that's for the University of Montreal crowd. So yeah, here we are at Domino. It's Friday, so it's Facebook Live time. We're going to talk about two topics today, and it's been coming up a lot. And one of the things is a black fly bite. This is the black fly. They're very small, and they are affecting dogs. <laughs> We've had a number of dogs come in with some very strange things on the bottom of their belly skin, and they look like this. I don't know if that will come out. But it's a red circle with a bullseye. And people are asking, is that Lyme disease? No, <laughs> it is not Lyme disease. It's a black fly bite. Very common at this time of the year. This started happening, I think it was last Wednesday and Thursday when the weather changed here in our area in Concord, Massachusetts. And sometimes you'll get a different form. It's more of a solid lesion. And those little red spots that appear on the groin, which is the underside of the dog uh, between the two rear, uh, rear legs, that very commonly is a black fly bite. Now I've had a dog that was a juvenile dog that came in and it was not black fly bite. So it's not universally always that. That particular dog, he had juvenile pyoderma. So what do we do for black fly bites? Well, sometimes they're just self-limiting, which means that they, they basically they go away on their own. Uh, we've been using uh, Quadratop, which is a magic thing. Let me just see if I can reach back and get some here for you. I have an expression here at the clinic, Quadratop cures everything. There's different versions of this. This particular medication is great. I love it. There's different brands of it, but this one is a corticosteroid, an antifungal, and an antibiotic. So just applying that is all that we usually need to do. Sometimes we'll use a diphenhydramine, and you guys know what that means? Diphenhydramine Benadryl is what it means. You knew that, right? So we can use human Benadryl at a standard dose. You'll have to check with your veterinarian. Don't, it's not for home use unless you know what you're doing. But it happens to be available over the counter without a prescription. So that's what we do for black fly bites. Uh, if you have those lesions and you want to learn more, you can let us know. Ask questions or text us or send us a comment on Facebook and, and we'll get back to you on that. Uh, the, the one that I'm really scared of is heat stroke. So it seems like every year when the weather changes, we get heat stroke. And it might be called heat intolerance or heat exhaustion, but it's something that we see usually in May on that really first warm day, especially if you had really cold weather. And as you know, here in New England, we're in a transition zone between northern air and southern air. When the southern air comes in, it just replaces the northern air. And if it's a humid air mass, uh, it's a sudden change in the biology of the dogs. And they're not heat acclimated. I think that that can happen in humans too. And heat stroke is a real insidious thing. It kind of creeps in through the back door. So uh, we did have some situations where dogs were just exercised. In one case, the dog was overweight, just a standard amount of exercise. But say the preceding days were 40s and 50s, and the day of the heat stroke, it's 85 degrees and high humidity. That poor dog is not gonna be acclimated to that weather. And this guy got into real problems. And we performed some in initial care here and uh, that particular patient needed to be on IV fluids and needed to be sustained uh, at a 24-hour facility for a long time. So uh, what are the signs of heat stroke? So I'm gonna probably have to refer to a book because it's so complicated because it causes multiple changes in all the body. But basically, it would be an animal that doesn't seem right, doesn't seem maybe a little bit lethargic. The gums can be very, very red and we call that hyperemia. And they can actually get to the point where they're so weak they'll collapse. So uh, what do we do for heat stroke? Well, the main message about heat stroke is get to the veterinarian right away because there's a lot that we can do. 
And then I think the other second take home message is we don't want to cool these dogs too rapidly because that's a very bad thing. We also don't want dogs to be over 106 or 7 degrees because that leads to organ dysfunction. So uh, actually cooling is a part of the solution and IV fluids are a part of the solution. Now let me just consult here and make sure that I have not missed anything. Uh, so one of the things that is tempting is to cool the animal yourself. And if your experience would be like my experience, it's very quick. It, it's very easy to overcool. And then you lose, you really lose it. So let's say you start an animal at 107 and you cool them really fast. They can just drop like a stone. And 102 is a, like a good target. You don't want to get below 102, but sometimes they'll go right down to 99 because their thermal regulation is all... Uh, all uh, altered. So it's not usually go to the clinic, get treated for heat stroke and go home. It's usually a hospitalization. Uh, my book tells me that some of the breeds may be predisposed. This particular text is saying that English Springer Spaniels and Labrador Retrievers may be predisposed. And as we said, the seasonal changes from cool to warm weather, especially sudden uh, times in exercising dogs. So dogs that are really out and about, they have to have a certain amount of exercise to develop that heat. And uh, also something I didn't know, I just was looking at this text, a previous episode of heat stroke can predispose your animal. So if you know that your animal may have a predisposition to this, don't push your luck on those first warm days. Now let's have a special word about brachycephalic breeds. You know those guys that have the smushy nose? So those guys, they can barely breathe at the best of times. I'm talking about French Bulldogs. I'm talking about Boston Terriers, Pugs, English Bulldogs. They just don't have enough nose. So they have a hard time moving air. And also their trachea, which is the windpipe going down, is smaller than you'd expect for the size of the dog. So if you have warm, heavy, humid weather, be very, very careful about exercising the brachycephalic or foreshortened nose breeds. Okay, now uh, the other thing that you can look for is the mucous membranes. Make sure that the gums are a normal color. If they are beet red, if they're very, very red, that's a sign that you need to go to the veterinarian. What to expect at the veterinarian? Okay, so when they come here, what we do is we bring them into our treatment area and we start cooling measures. We usually start with uh, towels and, and cooling measures, sometimes water. In extreme measures, we might put alcohol on the foot pads. We always start an IV. It's sometimes very hard to get IV access because they're in shock, circulatory shock and collapse. And we might be doing some blood testing. And very often, we run out of day because it usually happens at the end of the day when people come home from work and exercise their dog. And then we have to transfer to the emergency clinic. They also have vomiting and diarrhea with this. So at this time of the year, if you have a dog that's exercising, and if you have a dog that likes to have fun and really go for it and get tired out, if your dog is not acting right, not what you expect after exercise, please consider heat stroke. See if he's panting. You can take a rectal temperature if you want. Over, I'd say 102 at home might be cause for, for concern. And look at the gums if they're beet red. If you're not sure, call. Call the veterinarian. We would love to receive that phone call here at Domino Veterinary Hospital to make sure that there's not a problem because we can coach you through it and we can always take a look. Heat stroke is very scary. And unfortunately, in some cases, heat stroke is fatal. And it can, it can be a real challenge to treat. So I just want you guys to think about heat stroke don't overdo it on those first warm days. Uh, Kelsey, do you have any questions that have come in so far? Not today. Not today. Okay. Doesn't matter. If you have questions, as you did uh, last week, let, let us know. We'll respond. We're very glad that you uh, spent time to look at this. And if this is relevant information, please share it with your friends. And meanwhile, I'm Dr. Charles Bradley from Domino Veterinary Hospital. Thanking you very much. See you next week. Thank you.